Hi everyone, Grinny here and welcome to my channel. So for a lot of people who are not yet into crypto and Web3, one of the key things that confuses them greatly is the rise in popularity of art NFTs. All of them definitely have this question in mind. Why are these people paying so much goddamn money for these JPEGs? The dismissive nature of their question, of course, can be boiled down to a quote-unquote lack of utility. If these JPEGs have no use, why do people ascribe so much value to it? So what if I told you that all of these NFTs already have real-world utility? It's just that brands, businesses, and advertisers don't know it yet and don't know how to utilize these communities and these collections in order to communicate to a mass market. So today we're going to dive into two questions. How is it possible that these JPEGs already have real-world utility? And two, if you are a brand, a business, or advertiser, how can you leverage on these collections in order to drive more value to your brand? And let's dive in. So I'm at jpeg.store and if you already have bought NFTs in the past, has this situation ever happened to you where you are browsing through the marketplace for NFTs that you would like to collect? You've been eyeing a particular collection for the longest time. The floor for that collection has been rising steadily, but you just can't bring yourself to buy that particular NFT because you're just not into it. That is because each NFT collection conveys a particular emotion. These emotions resonate with you positively or negatively depending on what you value as an individual. So scientists like Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung have been able to successfully group together these emotions or these needs codify them into specific archetypes. So the way it works is each particular archetype speaks to a strong emotion or strong need or strong desire that you strongly or weakly resonate with. And if you've been buying a lot of NFTs, you would notice that the NFT collections that you like speak strongly to the type of person that you are or speak strongly to the emotions or needs that you value the most. So each collection actually strongly conveys a particular emotion. These emotions then could be codified. And this is an example of what it looks like. So for example, the ape society is definitely conveying power and mastery. El Matador is somewhere in between a mastery and intimacy. Clay Nations is really about enjoyment and intimacy. Chuckmates is all about enjoying and belonging to a particular community. Brightleaf Labs is about service and control. Her world is really about safety, understanding, and the Board Ape Yacht Club is really about understanding, freedom, and sometimes liberation. This is the reason why people ascribe value to these particular collections. It is a way for them to express themselves because of subconscious and instinctive alignment to what each collection that they have conveys as an emotion. This is the power of art NFTs. So now that we have an idea as to why these collections ascribe so much value from their respective collectors or communities, then it begs the question then, how are brands, businesses, and advertisers supposed to leverage on this opportunity in order to either collaborate or push for their products and services accordingly? So if we go back to the brand archetype map, it is not only the NFT collections that are closely aligned with these archetypes. Brands and businesses, whether or not they deliberately do it, also align themselves with these brand archetypes. This is an example of the manifestation of a brand archetype and how it relates to particular brands. The lover archetype, which focuses on intimacy, Chanel, Victoria's Secret, Alfa Romeo are some examples of brands that deeply embrace this particular archetype. The emotions that they want to convey and how they want to convey those emotions should be closely aligned with the archetype, else their customers or consumers will find their messages confusing. So even the way that they have to project themselves in the public space has to be driven by particular personalities associated with that archetype. Even the colors that they use should be aligned with that archetype or else you are causing confusion in the mass market. This is another example. So the jester archetype, which deals a lot with pleasure. You have M&M's, Old Spice, Dollar Shave Club. These are examples of brands that have to convey a particular message in order for people to associate them with pleasure. 
So now that we know that it's not just NFT collections, it's not just individuals that conform to these particular brand archetypes, brands and businesses are also following this same archetype framework, whether they deliberately do it or not. What is then the opportunity for brands and advertisers to work together with these NFT collections? So before we dive into that, for brands and advertisers, at the current state of brand marketing, whether it's real world or digital, there are two main questions that they consistently have to answer. The first one is, who are my target audiences? And the second one is, how do we reach them effectively? So all of the platforms, all of the media platforms that are currently available to them are able to provide two key things. The demographic profiles, basically who are the particular audiences. So this could be gender, this could be age, and other demographic factors like income levels, etc. For certain digital platforms, they are also able to provide the respective behaviors for these people. Digital usage, media usage, etc., etc. Now, the problem with the current targeting infrastructure is these brands and advertisers want to get to know people on a deeper level than just knowing their demographic profiles and also what they do. Because at the end of the day, even though these parties know these two things, they still have to manage this particular issue. How do we communicate the right messages effectively? So this is where the first real-world utility of art NFTs kicks in. Once art NFTs have massive adoption globally because of blockchain technology, it actually allows brands and advertisers to one, properly align themselves with certain NFT collections because remember, for better communication alignment, you want your brand and you want your particular partners to resonate within the same archetype so that your communication is properly aligned. So because of blockchain technology, it is very easy for brands and advertisers to target people who resonate the same way as them by being able to search for which wallets own which NFT collections. So for example, if I'm an environmental group or if I'm a brand that cares about the environment, let's say Body Shop, for example, and I need a way to be able to easily target people who have the same values as me as a business, then all I have to do is search for the people who have Bright Leaf Labs Guardian NFT collection. Not only do these businesses now have visibility on who owns this particular collection, it is also now a way for a collaboration to potentially happen for this brand or business with a particular NFT maker and also the community who owns that particular collection. So let's say a particular brand or advertiser wants to work with the Board Ape Yacht Club creators, Yuga Labs, and its particular community. So the way they can do it is they can work with Yuga Labs to create a limited edition NFT collection that is associated with that brand that can only be minted by people who already own a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT. Let's say that particular limited edition mint is a special discount NFT where as long as the wallet has that particular NFT, whenever they would buy from that brand or business using that wallet, they would forever have either a 5, 10, 15% discount because you can code in tiers for that limited collection. Some people who mint can get a forever 15% discount. Some people who mint will get 5. Some people who mint could get 10%. And because you can mint it, it can be easily sold through the secondary market. That brand or business, along with Yuga Labs, can program a particular commission so that Every time this particular limited edition NFT changes hands via via marketplace transaction, they receive 5, 10, 15% of the revenue. Not only does that brand or business have a forever long tail revenue stream because of that particular codification in the smart contract, you are now also tapping into the community, the people who believe in the board Ape Yacht Club to consistently shill this collection online. For the brand or business, instead of going through influencers or key opinion leaders when you don't know or you can't quantify properly the influence that they actually have within their communities, in this case, you can work directly with a particular NFT community to shill your particular initiative and all it takes is minting a particular collection and let the secondary market do its thing. This is just one example of a potential collaboration between an NFT community with the particular brand and advertiser. So right now, we're not there yet. I think it's important to note that this particular scenario only works 
when you really have mass market appeal and mass market adoption of art NFTs. But you do have to take note of its potential because NFT collections are not only the immediate value based on the community who buys it. Eventually, it will have real-world utility, but it will take brands, advertisers, and businesses to realize the potential partnerships and the potential savings that they can have by leveraging on communities instead of leveraging on influencers and key opinion leaders. Yo, 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 before you go, like this video, subscribe, and share this video to your friends. Thank you very much and have a good day.